Okay, we're here with a deal. We're, we're here with a deal from Psionic. Cy yes. Is that another company? Yes. Yeah. Well, so you came here to TechCon. You're a presenter and a panelist. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Well, thank you for coming. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad to be here. It's a, it's a very exciting uh, tech conference here. And uh, this is my first time here. So it's really cool to see the community coming together. Yeah, it's awesome. So you're not a San Diego native. You came from Illinois, from Chicago area to yeah. here? Yeah. So yeah, I was, I was born and raised in Chicago. Um, went to school at Loyola for undergrad. Um, did a master's and PhD at University of Illinois, where, where I started the company, Psionic. And then about a year and a half ago, we moved down to San Diego. Wow. <laughs> So why did you come to San Diego other than the weather? Everybody says the weather, but you know, is that the only reason? No, no, it wasn't the only reason, but <laughs> it, it, it was a factor for sure. <laughs> those, um, those Midwest winters can get pretty rough. Yeah. Uh, but uh, so we, we build bionic limbs, right? So we build bionic limbs. Um, so if you're missing a hand, then you can use it as a replacement. And the way most people control it is just by using muscle sensors. So you do these pre-programmed grips, like a power grip. So if you want to shake hands with the hand, nice to meet you, guy. Yes. <laughs> uh, so that was a pre-programmed uh, exactly. response. That was a pre-programmed response, right? Okay. Uh, but what we're doing in San Diego is we're working with the Navy Hospital as well as UCSD where I'm affiliate faculty in bioengineering. And uh, we're working with um, the orthopedic surgeons and hand surgeons in both of those groups to do the next generation of bionic limbs where um, instead of uh, this being like attached to what we call a socket that goes over your arm uh, with uh, sensors embedded on the outside, we're doing a titanium implant that gets embedded in your bones and then a... Um, an implanted sensor that goes in your nerves so that it'll allow actually people to do individual finger control. So we're hoping in a year and a half that we might actually have our first patients playing piano or typing on a keyboard again. Really? <laughs> That's incredible. And you think this all happened through brain waves? Yep. Like what normally would happen to move my fingers will happen. Exactly. That's exactly. Amazing. So yeah, through neural activity. And our goal is to turn San Diego into the bionics capital of the world by bringing all these different resources together and just doing something the world has never seen. There's a lot of press about Neuralink, uh, Musk's company. Sure. Is, are you tied in with that somehow or is it so totally separate? Or? We have connected our hand to brain implants before. And um, actually this was on 60 Minutes last year. There's a, a patient through the University of Chicago who was uh, paralyzed in a car accident and they put brain implants in him. And then just by thinking, he was actually able to move our hand on a robot arm and shake the 60 Minutes host hand. But then they blindfolded him and they touched our fingers and he was like, that's my index finger. That's the middle finger. Oh, that's really? my ring finger. Yeah, because they were stimulating that. <clears throat> of the brain <laughs> so so stop the press you 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 you've got two-way feedback going. yes so this oh, is I didn't realize this that. is the only bionic hand on the market we call it the ability hand um, it's the only bionic hand on the market to give users touch feedback and so first patient was a um, US Army sergeant uh, who lost his hand in Iraq in 2005 due to a roadside bomb and he actually told us that he could feel his daughter's hand and that was something wow. that he could do with any other prosthesis and when we we hear that right I mean that's why we do what we do yeah, that's incredible. <laughs> did you did you get into your PhD program with this idea in mind? Yeah, so actually, I've wanted to build bionic limbs my entire life. Um, wow. <laughs> ever since I was seven. So I was mentioning I was born in Chicagoland area, but my parents are from Pakistan. And I was visiting um, when I was seven years old, and that's the first time I met someone missing a limb. And she was my age, missing her right leg, using a tree branch and living in poverty, a tree branch as a crutch. And that's what inspired me to go into this field. <laughs> now, uh, that seems to be, there's, that's more common in, I don't want to say third world country because that might be offensive, but, uh, but in, in, in a lot of areas of the world, that's more common than we realize, people missing limbs. Or, oh, absolutely. Because maybe medicine isn't advanced and they have to amputate or maybe yeah. war, war injuries. Exactly. Or, that exactly. seems to be common. And so actually, according to the World Health Organization, 80% of people with amputations or limb differences are in developing nations and less than 3% can actually afford it. So that's yeah, a huge problem. Oh, wow. That's great. So this is something that just you were inspired by? and Yep, absolutely. So you were, were, did you... Where did you, so you, how did you make the connection from people missing limbs to I'm going to develop the technology to do this? Yeah, you know, so the original plan, my, my original plan was to become a medical doctor that would work with patients with limb differences, right? And um, when I was doing my undergrad, I took a computer science class and I loved it. And I was like, if I become a doctor, then I don't get to do any of this cool <laughs> stuff, right? And so I wanted to figure out how to combine it. And there was a, a hospital called the Shirley Ryan Ability Lab. It's the number one rehab hospital in the US, um, in Chicago. They uh, were making these break 
breakthroughs in these mind controlled bionic limbs. And I was like, this is the perfect combination of engineering and medicine. And so I ended up uh, getting a bachelor's in biology, master's in computer science, um, another master's in electrical engineering, a PhD in neuroscience. And then I left medical school to do this because this was a bit more fun than finishing med school. But really that, that transition happened um, was when I was doing my PhD, we got this chance to go down to Ecuador. Um, and we were working with a patient there with a very, very early prototype of this hand. So it was like three times the size of an average human hand, wires going everywhere, plugged into breadboards, power supplies, computers, the wall. And um, our patient, Juan, um, he had lost his left hand 35 years prior due to a landmine explosion. He was in the Ecuadorian army and there was a border war between Ecuador and Peru. And this is a part of a much longer story of two weeks of all-nighters and trying to get this hand to work. But he, in front of international news stations, said that he felt as though a part of him had come back. And that was because he made a pinch with his left hand for the first time in 35 years. Wow. And, and he could feel the response. Oh, so at that point, we didn't have the touch oh, you sensors. Didn't have that. We didn't have the touch sensors at that point. He actually forgot how to make a pinch. And we had to retrain his brain by placing a mirror in front of his amputated side, reflecting his right hand, tricking his brain into thinking that his left hand was there. And so when he said, like in front of those news stations, that he felt as though a part of him had come back, that's when I realized that if I stay at a university, that this just ends up as a journal paper. Yeah. If we want everyone to feel the same way as Juan, we have to commercialize the technology. And that's when Psionic was born. Wow, that's incredible. <laughs> now, do you own patents on that type of thing? Is... Yeah, yeah. So we've got um, four patents, and then um, two of them are issued already. So one is on the speed of the hand, so this is the fastest Psionic hand on the market. Um, the other is on the flexible finger design, so I can take this, I can smash it. Um, Sergeant Anderson, our first patient in the US, um, he has done flaming board breaking with it. I've arm wrestled the paratriathlete national <laughs> champion and lost. Uh, I'm going to start working out a bit more. Yeah, uh, yeah. But this thing can take a beating. Um, and then also on the touch feedback, um, there's uh, some uh, a patent there and some of the surgeries that we're developing for integrating this to the body. Wow, I'm 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 almost at a loss for words. How cool! <laughs> how just freaking cool this is! How cool you are! Oh, thank you. <laughs> I mean, it's just the the idea that you can do that now was is your family from Pakistan originally? Yeah. So my parents are from. Pakistan. Now, are you an immigrant, or did you, were you born? I was born here. Okay. Was, so me and my brothers were all born in Chicago. But what a story! I mean, yeah. I mean, I don't know how your parents got here, but. Yeah. I mean, I, what a story. I mean, did they have any idea that this child would become, <laughs> I mean, you, you would be considered a savior to some people oh. that have never had, you know, that they're that this is a major part of a life changing event for people. I mean, and I mean, our users are incredible and they're, they're able to do incredible things even without our hand. And so, I mean, just to see their resilience, I mean, that's one of the things that keeps us uh, motivated. But yeah, I mean, going back to my parents, I mean, I mean, part of the reason why they moved to the United States was to just give their kids a much larger opportunity, right? And so I'm grateful that um, they they saw that uh, potential. This is why San Diego is just so freaking cool. <laughs> I mean, we just bring all these people like you that somehow end up here and so much diverse backgrounds and, and yeah. talent and capability and passion. It's just great. Love it. <laughs> so I saw you outside doing something where somebody was moving their hand. How was that working? Yeah, so, okay, remember I was telling you about how we're working with the Navy Hospital and, and UCSD to like get this individual finger control, right? So that our patients might play piano or type on a keyboard. And so to demonstrate that, we're gonna do something fun here. So uh, okay. I'm actually gonna uh, connect over Bluetooth to the hand on my phone. And if you put your hand in front of the camera, then you should actually, you'll actually be able to control the fingers. So if you bend your fingers, yeah, it's just wow. mimicking exactly what your hand is doing. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Wow. My dot, one of my kids would immediately do a gesture that was inappropriate. Um, it's usually the first one that's done. But it's pretty fast. Right? Yeah. Oh, that, this is the first one. Hey, okay, right. I, wasn't, I, wasn't I was the only one to go there. All right, cool. That is, that is really cool. And so you can imagine that that level of control, right? That that our patients, they would really be able to do a lot of dexterous things. And that's why we're hoping that in a year and a half, we start clinical trials with the Navy and UCSD, and it's gonna be really revolutionary what we're gonna be doing. I, I, can, I can just see your success already. That's amazing. <laughs> now, um, talk to me about the, the journey and getting money to do this, because obviously yeah. there's a lot of tech. Yep, absolutely. And this, this wasn't invented overnight. <laughs> so and, talk to me about your fundraising journey. I think you mentioned earlier that you did some sort of crowdsourcing. Yeah, I, yeah. I, nobody really, crowdsourcing is like this new thing. That, <laughs> That modern day investors are like, 
what is that, right? Sure. So talk, yeah. talk to us through that. Yeah, absolutely. And so when we when we first started out, so I mean we've been developing this hand for about like nine years or so. And this is the ninth generation of the ability hand. And um, well, when we were starting out, we were funded um, through uh, SBIR, Small Business and Innovation, Small Business Innovation and Research Grants from the National Science Foundation. Oh, okay. And so we raised about two point four million in grants from from NSF. And um, around 2019-ish, at um, 2020, we did a, uh, a pre-seed round. And um, that was more traditional angel investors, like uh, a couple of VCs, like 8VC um, out of the Bay Area. And we raised um, 1.4 million um, in, th in that round. And that got us to the point where we were able to get this out to market. And, um, and uh, in September of 2021, the hand has been available nationwide. It's covered by Medicare. Um, we have over 150 patients using the hand and 50 robotics researchers worldwide. Um, and so, uh, our biggest problem right now is that we have more demand than we can produce, which is actually a good problem to have. And part of us moving to San Diego was so that we could scale our manufacturing and operations, uh, potentially even do nearshoring and things like that. And um, and so in order to get to that next level, we we start, raised our seed round. And, you know, 2023, 2022 was like actually some of the worst time in <laughs> human history to raise from VCs, right? Yes, yes, uh, yes. We all knew that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and so the thing is, is that for us, half of our sales come from uh, social media, which for an FDA registered medical device isn't pretty, is not typical. Uh, and, and so... We have a lot of cool videos that we were showing, like flame board breaking. We make the hand walk on its own. I had a, a lightsaber duel with a Boston Dynamics dog using our hand. And <laughs> um, we had all this like viral content. We were like, okay, this is very conducive for something like an equity crowdfunding campaign, which is very visual. We get the word out to, there to as many people um, as possible. And, um, and so that was one thing that was, you know, kind of working in our favor. Uh, the other thing was that you know, we're a company that's all about accessibility, right? So we make advanced bionic limbs that are accessible for humans and robots. And so we were like, if, if we made the hand accessible, why don't we make the company accessible as well too? And the most beautiful thing about that has been that our own patients have got the chance to invest in the company. Oh, wow. And that's something that, you know, it's traditionally uh, reserved for like accredited investors, right? With a with a high net worth. Is this right? still active? Are you still active? So we just closed the round about oh, a month okay. ago. Right. Yeah, so um, we, we actually closed it in January. We had raised 3.1 million, but then we were on Shark Tank. And so then we were like, okay, we got to keep that momentum up. And so we opened the round up for another month and then we got uh, 4 million. Uh, in, yeah, oh, raised. that's great. <laughs> so you went on Shark Tank. Yes. So that was, that's great. That's crazy. Um, uh, how was, what, t talk us through that experience. Oh man, it was, it was nerve wracking and exhilarating at the yeah, same yeah, time. Yeah. Right. And, uh, and it filmed back in September and we didn't know it was going to air until like maybe like three weeks uh, before it actually aired uh, back in the end of February. And um, you're, you're, you know, you're in the shark in front of the sharks for like 45 minutes. The cameras are rolling the entire time. Yes. There's no like edits or anything like that. And they've never seen you before, right? So they have no idea you're going to be there. They don't know what's coming up. So completely cold pitch. The only thing that's scripted is like the first two minutes of my pitch. And um, Sergeant Anderson, our first patient, was on there with me. We did a live board breaking demonstration that went over really, really well. <laughs> uh, Mark Cuban tried out the the hand demo with the camera. Yeah, he thought yeah. that was cool. Did he do the so, finger too? He, yeah, yeah. I, I I can neither confirm nor deny that. <laughs> but... I just want to know that Mark Cuban went the same place. I did. That's all I want to know. <laughs> uh, but uh, it was yeah, it was uh, an exhilarating experience. We got a three shark deal out of it. So Kevin, Lori, and Damon ended up coming in for a million. So right, that's, yeah. that's, that's fun. <laughs> and yeah, and getting to represent you know San Diego and like uh, and Champaign, Illinois too is just a really cool experience. Yeah, that is awesome. What a, what a great thing. It's so fun. <laughs> so crowdsourcing, you got some money from Shark Tank, and now you're off and running. Wow, this is this is a great thing to see. So what has been the reaction from people here at the event? Oh, they've been loving it. Um, because it's a San Diego native event, we've been here for about a year and a half. I've, I've, I've met like some of the people here, but it's really cool to, to uh, you know, meet the people I haven't met and then see their reactions for the first time. It's like, wow, this cool tech is being built here in San Diego. Yeah. And it's just really awesome that, um, you know, we have this ecosystem, this community that's being built around all this cool tech that's coming out of this area. Yeah. Now, uh, Thank you so much for taking this interview. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, we'll, we'll probably wrap up, but I, before we go, there's one outstanding question I think I've got to ask. Mm -hmm. You've been talking mostly about prosthetic, you know, limb replacement. Yeah. 
uh, as your primary market, but it feels like this would merge into the robotics industry pretty quickly. Absolutely. Has that already started to happen? Yeah, yeah. And um, so we have a programming interface for the hand that allows any researcher to control every single finger and stream all the touch sensors uh, back. And uh, the thing is, if you're building a robot to do human tasks, we've optimized our hand for humans to do human tasks, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so it makes sense that the robots use the same thing. So NASA has our hand. Um, they have it on their humanoid astronaut robot, Valkyrie. And um, their, their plan is to send it into space and then you would actually control it on Earth and it does stuff on the International wow. Space Station eventually. And latency would be a problem in that case. So, right? I mean, I uh, yeah, it might be, yeah, but yeah. Um, there's like hybrid AI approaches you can take where you send like high level commands and then- And like, then you, you just know. you just send a little little command exactly. and run the high level command. Exactly, okay, that that's sense. right, yeah. that's right. So um, that's one of the strategies that they're working on in order to deploy this in, in such a large distance, right? <laughs> um, so Facebook has our hand, they're trying to do some like, you know, remote teleoperation um, style stuff and like reinforcement learning. Um, but one of the coolest things was just like a couple months ago. Um, so one of our biggest clients, uh, Aptronic, they're a humanoid robot company based out of Texas. Um, they made a deal with Mercedes um, and uh, we have pictures from Mercedes of their humanoid robot using our hands to like build cars. And I'm like, this is really cool. This is kind of the future of where a lot of this technology is heading, where it's like this seamless integration between humans and machines, both like physically and directly, but also in like the workplace as well. Now, um, is it how, how sensitive is the? Yeah, like I, I'm, I'm a chess player, so oh, is it yeah. sensitive enough to pick up a chess oh, piece? Absolutely, and absolutely, and we can we can do very 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 precise movements. Um, wow. We've had our patients um, grab raspberries without crushing them and hollow eggshells while blindfolded without cracking them. Really? Um, the, the touch feedback and the sensitivity of the fingers. Wow, that's incredible. <laughs> Boy, the, things are changing quick, aren't they? For real, yeah. And yeah. we're excited to be at the forefront of all of it. Yeah, well, you've been, it's been great to chat with you. Thank you so much for coming to TechCon. Yeah, my, love, my pleasure. Love the fact that you're here. This is amazing. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Adil. Appreciate it. Thank you for listening to this episode of The Founder's Journey. You can follow us at foundersjourney.fm for updates on our episodes and to recommend future guests. Special thanks to our primary sponsor, New Fund Venture Group, who can be found at newfund, N-U-F-U-N-D.com.